Hi, John here. This is Up For Excel. And today we're going to be producing this beautiful looking clustered stacked column chart. This is not a chart you can just produce in Excel. It's not one of the default charts. We're going to use some hacks to get this uh, looking like this. So let's get on with it. Now, half the battle on any chart in Excel is getting your data structured correctly in the first place. So I've got my data table set up like this, which shows um, I have three different product areas and for each product area, I have a different method of delivery. So road and air deliveries for furniture, office supplies and technology. And then I have my sales figures by quarter laid out like that. The key to this technique is that we're going to produce two clustered um, column charts and then we're going to overlay them on top of each other using uh, dual axis chart method. And then we're going to adjust them to make sure that the axes align and that everything falls into place so that um, we're not going to get things overlapping each other and um, and things like that. We're then going to sort of tart it up a bit and pick some nice colour schemes and the like and do some decent level of formatting. And like I say, we're going to end up with it looking pretty much like this, well, exactly like this, I hope. So we've got our chart data. Now, if I was to just highlight that and uh, do Alt F1 to get a basic chart up and running, uh, you can see that it's going to get quite, it's quite a confusing chart. It's nowhere near, um, it's not looking anything like as nice as the chart I've just shown you previously. So this is what we're up against. Now, we're not going to be able to just take this chart and manipulate it to make it look like the other one. What we have to do is rearrange the data slightly. Um, so I'll just remove that chart, because that's there, there as an example. Okay, so we need to restructure this data in order to be able to produce our new flash looking chart. So we're going to use two clustered column charts on basically on top of each other, both with three bars in each chart. And so we're going to need a dual axis chart in order to do that. But in order to stop them overlapping each other, one of the things we have to do is we have to ensure that um, the one of the uh, data points is the sum of both so that we can show the difference. So the way we're going to do that, if we insert a column in here, right, so I'm going to create a whole new set of data which is linked to this. So first off, we want the same headings, so we'll pick that up there. Now I'm going to create a new combination um, legend key, which is going to be, we'll have, so furniture, and then we'll merge that with the word buy and the delivery method. So I have there furniture by road. Okay. Um, there. So for the road, we will just pick up the value. Now, when it comes to the air value or the secondary value, we need to pick up both. We need to obviously pick up the, the total for the, um, the actual item, but we need to add it on to what we already have so that it appears as if it's a stacked column on top of the road. Because if you look back at um, the chart, for example here, we have our 250K for the furniture by road, and then the what you would think was a stacked bar of 70 on top of that is actually, you can see, is a full height bar just showing behind it of the full 320 sales. 
So giving the impression of it being a stacked bar on top. So that's what we're doing. So yes, we add the air value onto that and then we show that as the secondary, I believe, axis. So if we copy that, those formulas across like that, and then we do the same for these here, that should give us the data that we want. So by highlighting that now, doing Alt F1, bring up a basic chart on screen, we can now start manipulating this chart. So I'll just make that bigger. I know this is uh, taking out most of the, the value that we're looking at. So first off, we're going to start changing, we want to change the chart type. So we actually do want a clustered column, but one we want to actually create a clustered column with for all parts, so change, but we just want to change some of it onto the secondary axes. So if we say we'll put um, the, I think we need to put, we need to experiment slightly here, uh, which one it is. It looks like it could be that one on the secondary axis, the lower of the two. That looks probably about right. We haven't got our axes the same, so we need to align them. So I could just do that manually now, which I will, so that we're, so I change the maximum to the same, just so that I can check that we're going to have something that looks reasonable. So that is the basics of our chart. But actually, I can do a lot better than that. So I'm just going to reset that. What I want to do is make sure that this stays, these two axes stay the same. Um, and if I've just moved, sorry, if I move this chart over here a second or down here slightly, one of the ways I can do that is create a max point. So I can put this anywhere, it doesn't really matter, but I'm actually going to put it. Um, as a line on the bottom, I'll just say max, and I will just put equal, sorry, we're up here somewhere, right, equals the max of all that area, four, five, three. And then I'm going to plot that number, I'm going to introduce that number onto the chart on both the primary and the secondary axes, and then um, ensure the data is invisible. That way the axes will automatically adjust as if they have the same maximum value in them. So I'll do that now. So the way I do that is I'll go back to the design of the chart and select data. And I'm going to introduce a new series and I'm just going to call it max p for primary. And on the value here, I'm just going to say it's that value. Okay. And then I'm going to add another one and call it max secondary, max S, and put that one on as well. Okay, so I have two new series now, max P and a max S. I click OK. And you can see what's happened immediately is that it's put these two new bars on which are a right pane. So the first thing is I want to plot one on the primary axis and then the other one needs to be plot on the secondary axis which it is. And if we move this one back into view again you can see we generated a slight problem again in that we've shifted everything off centre because we it now thinks we have a new series to plot, so everything's slightly off center. Now the way we're going to get around that is change the chart type of this. So that max P I'm going to say is now a line. And this one I'm also going to say is a line. Okay, well I'm back in business. So to recap, at this point, we now have 
what appears to be a clustered stack bar chart. Um, it's a bit wacky and out there in terms of its color schemes, but it is actually showing something sensible. So we also have a legend, but we have these nasty sort of entries in here that we don't really want. So by clicking on that individually and hitting a delete key, so two clicks, one to click select the legend, the second to select the item, hit the delete key, and we can get rid of that. I also like to see my legend at the top, so I right click, format that legend and put it at the top. And you'll see in a minute that um, I can do something along the lines of that. And I'll move that chart title over there. And the chart title, what I always like to do, if I just move this whole chart slightly, is put the chart title here and then link it that way. Um, if we're creating other similar charts, we can just change the title there and copy and paste this whole chart and it'll all link up. So this one I'm calling um, sales um, by uh, product, wasn't it? If you remember, uh, with delivery method. Right, so that chart title there. Um, well, actually, I'm just going to and do Alt Enter in there so that we wrap that text around like that. That way, then when I link this, we can hopefully pick that up. Yes. Right. So I'm going to make that one bold. And I'm going to massively increase the font size as well. And right. Now this can seriously increase too. Right now, let's get this chart itself looking good. So firstly, both axes are the same. So we can certainly hide the secondary axes. We know that they're gonna be the same every time. So that's a great option. So if we go to labels on the axis options, and instead of saying next to label, we say none. So that's the first thing. Oops, didn't want to move that. And we can then also expand that slightly. Right, that gets rid of those. This has got too many significant figures in it for my liking, so I'm going to change that number format. So again, back on here, number. I've set up my own custom format. I'm going to use the one with in thousands, where by leaving a comma at the end of the of the number format, it it shows Excel that it can miss off the last three numbers. So we'll do that. We'll also make it bold, and I think we can possibly increase the size of the digits there too. This one we can definitely increase in size. We can probably get away with a bit more than that even, but I'll maybe slightly smaller. Uh, we will need to sort of up that a bit. That's looking good. All right, so we're looking certainly a lot better. Horrible color scheme though. So let's do the plot area. Now we might be able to find a decent color scheme just by doing something like this. Mm. Yeah, I th think we're gonna struggle. I think uh, that that's too much like hard work if you ask me. On here, we go to the format, we can just shape fill, so we'll go for a, say the second from darkest red, and then this one we can go with, say one up from that. This one, second from darkest yellow. Next one, one up from that. 
second from darkest green. One up from that. Now, actually, I kind of think it doesn't look quite so good. So I'm actually going to go for these top numbers. Right, which I believe is what we probably went with before. Now, I'm slightly disappointed in the way it's ordered this legend. So if anyone knows of a way of changing the order of the things that appear in the legend, so I'd quite like to see um, furniture by road there, then furniture by air, and I'm not entirely sure I know how to do that, other than to genuinely swap around the entire uh, order of stuff here and on the chart, which I'm not particularly keen on doing because it's probably going to mess everything up. Finally, I think I'm probably just going to widen the bars slightly. So I go here, probably decrease the gap width to maybe, maybe if we do, what should we say, 50, is that going to be? Mm, obviously, we're, we're going to have to set them both the same. I think maybe 70. Yeah, and then we'll do the same with these ones. So we'll do that as 70, both aligned. If you change my mind there, I think 100 might be better. We just want that slight bigger gap. There we go. And that, I think, is a pretty good looking stacked column bar chart. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to make charts completely dynamic. So additional data will be automatically coming into these charts. Basically, when new sales figures come in, how the chart will automatically expand to accommodate them and also even highlight areas where you have your maximum or minimum figures within those charts. So that's going to be a great video. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get a notification when that one's out if it's not already out. See you soon. Goodbye.